Welcome to Chapter 4 of AP Calculus. In this lesson, we will focus on interpreting the meaning of a derivative in the context of a problem. First, let's review what a derivative actually is. A derivative is the rate of change of the dependent variable with respect to the independent variable at a specific point. So if we think about the independent variable being x and the dependent variable being y, we could also say this is the rate of change of y with respect to x at a specific point, or dy dx, which is notation that you should be familiar with at this point. When a problem asks you to interpret the meaning of the derivative in the context of the problem, there's a specific phrase that you can use that will guarantee success. You can say at x is equal to blank, so the value that you're given for the independent variable, the dependent variable, whatever that is, like the temperature of the water or the number of people, is either increasing or decreasing, depending on whether it's positive or negative, at a rate of, here's the derivative value, and here's the units for the derivative. So the phrase is a little bit confusing, but as we do some examples, it should make more sense. Now, x could also be t, depending on whether they give you x or t as the independent variable. So you might say at t is equal to something instead. So when it says units of the derivative up here, what units do we use to describe the derivative? Well, when you're describing the derivative, you're always going to use units of f of x over the units of x, or the units of the dependent variable over the units of the independent variable. So some examples for units of the derivative could be degrees Celsius per hour, or people per minute, or something like that. Oftentimes, the units of x is going to be in time, some unit of time. Let's take a look at this example. The temperature of water in a lake is given by the function w of t, where w is measured in degrees Celsius and t is measured in minutes. Interpret w prime of four is equal to 0 0.02 in the context of the problem. First, we're going to identify the independent and dependent variables. So the dependent variable is going to be w, the temperature of the water in the lake. And for our units here, the units for the dependent variable is going to be in degrees Celsius. The independent variable is minutes, so t in minutes. Now let's think about our units for w prime of t. Remember, the units for the derivative are the units of the dependent variable over the units of the independent variable. So we will take degrees Celsius and put it over minutes. So this means that the units for w prime of t are going to be degrees Celsius per minute. Now we can come up with our answer. So this is where we're going to use this phrase. So first we need to figure out at x is equal to what? What did they plug in for x or t? In this case, they plugged in four. So we will say at t is equal to four. And then we have to say the dependent variable. What's the dependent variable in this case? Well, it's w, the temperature of the water. So we will say the temperature of the water and then since this value here, since w prime of 4 is a positive number, this means that the temperature of the water is increasing. And then we use the phrase at a rate of. So it's increasing at a rate of. And then what is the actual rate? Well, the actual rate is 0 0.02. So at a rate of 0 0.02, and then we just need to stick on our units for the derivative. We already found the units for the derivative, and that's in degrees Celsius per minute. So 0 0.02 degrees Celsius per minute. So our final answer for this one would be at t is equal to 4, the temperature of the water is increasing at a rate of 0 0.02 degrees Celsius per minute. If you like, instead of saying at t equals 4, you could say at t is equal to 4 minutes or at 4 minutes. Either one of those works. You just need to clarify what is the time. The number of people at a shopping center is given by the function p of t, where t is measured in hours after 8 o'clock a.m. Interpret p prime of 11 is equal to negative 56 in the context of the problem. So again, we're not going to write out our independent variable and dependent variable, but we are going to use that same phrase. So first we're going to say at t is equal to what? What have they plugged in for t? Well, it's at t is equal to 11. So you can either say at t equals 11 or at 7 o'clock p.m. because that's 11 hours after 8 a.m. Either one of those works. And then what is happening at 7 o'clock p.m. or when t is equal to 11? Well, the number of people in the shopping center, which is the dependent variable, is decreasing, because this number is negative, by 56 people per hour. At 7 o'clock p.m. when t is equal to 11, the number of people in the shopping center is decreasing at a rate of 56 people per hour. 
This would be the completed statement for the context of the problem. Now keep in mind, even though the value is technically negative 56, because I already said the rate is decreasing, I wouldn't say it's decreasing at a rate of negative 56 people per hour. I just say it's decreasing at a rate of 56 people per hour. And the unit for the derivative there is people per hour because we take the units for the dependent variable, which is people, and we divide it by the units for the independent variable, which was hours. The rate at which dogs enter a dog park in dogs per hour is given by d of t, where t is measured in hours. Interpret d prime of 4 is equal to 15 in context. This one's a little bit different because they're giving us a function d that is already a rate. So when we write our context statement, when it's talking about d prime, that's the rate at which the rate is changing. We're still going to follow that same structure though. So first we have to think at x is equal to what or at t is equal to what. Well, we're going to say at t is equal to 4 because they've plugged in 4 for t there. And then what is our dependent variable? Well, our dependent variable is the rate at which dogs are entering a dog park. So we will say the rate at which dogs enter a dog park. And then we need to determine whether that rate is increasing or decreasing. So it's going to be increasing because the derivative value is positive. So the rate at which dogs enter the dog park is increasing by a rate of 15. And here's where we have to be really careful with the units. We take our units for the dependent variable, which is dogs per hour, and we put that over the units for the independent variable, which is hours. So it's increasing by a rate of 15 dogs per hour per hour. At t equals 4, the rate at which dogs enter the dog park is increasing by a rate of 15 dogs per hour per hour. The height of a child at time t is given by the twice differentiable function h, where h of t is measured in inches and t is measured in years. Selected values of h of t are given in the table below. So here we have our years and here we have h of t in inches. Use the data in the table to estimate h prime of 5. Using correct units, interpret h prime of 5 in the context of the problem. And we're going to have to pull back some knowledge from a previous lesson here. So they don't give us what h prime of 5 actually is. They only give us t and h of t. We can estimate h prime of 5, the instantaneous rate of change of h at t equals 5, by getting the average rate of change of h at values surrounding 5. So we're going to choose 4 and 6. We're going to be focused on these two values here. So I'm going to say h prime of 5 is approximately, and then I'm going to do h of 6 minus h of 4 over 6 minus 4. That would be the average rate of change or the slope of the secant line of h between 4 and 6. And then I just need to plug in my values for that. h of 6 is equal to 45. h of 4 is equal to 40. And that's 2. So 5 halves or 2.5. Now we need to interpret h prime of 5 in the context of the problem. So we will use that same phrase. So first we will say at t is equal to 5. And then we need to identify what is the dependent variable. In this case, it's the height of the child. So the height of the child. And then is it increasing or decreasing? Well, it's increasing here because h prime of 5 is positive. And it's increasing at a rate of 5 halves. And then what's our unit here? Our unit for h prime of 5 is going to be inches per year because we just take this unit over this unit. 5 halves inches per year. And then since we were estimating h prime of 5, I'm going to include about somewhere in the statement. So at t is equal to 5 years, the height of the child is increasing at a rate of, and then I'm just going to insert approximately here. There we go. There's our statement. If you want more practice estimating the instantaneous rate of change by using the average rate of change, I do have a separate video on that topic.